The history of the Department of Design started in the 1950s and 1960s with a small core of early faculty members in the School of Art. Don Wood, Fred Zimmer, Leonard Kitts, James Boffman, and Phyllis Crum, along with instructor Roger Horn, provided two years of design-oriented study to art students who expressed interest in product design, graphic design, or interior design. Dean Jerome Hausman supported the notion of teaching design, and he worked to bring experts like Charles Walschlager to the School of Art. Jerry Hausman and two faculty from design, and I think one was Fred Zimmer, uh, came. They came twice, and I was at that time working for uh, Herman Miller. But then uh, the second time they went around, I made that decision that I'd come. And the premise of all that is that I, he was asking me if I would join and help develop that area and major. With Walschlager on board, the mission to create a separate unit for design took on a new energy. His knowledge of European models used for design education encouraged the alignment of the department's three majors with systematic approaches to problem solving. To encourage this, he expanded the instructional staff for the majors by bringing temporary visiting professors, often educated in Europe and especially at Germany's Ulm School, to Ohio State to teach and help with curriculum development. One of those visiting professors was Reinhard Buder. Here comes Reinhard Buder. He sends Reinhard Buder's name as a replacement. And Jerry went along with it. And I didn't know it as acting chair. So nobody met Reinhard Buder at the airport. <laughs> Reinhard was really full of energy. And uh, we got along real well. Reinhard Buder brought influences that many of the visitors also provided. But of course, while most of the visitors came and went, Reinhardt arrived in 1967 and stayed. I ended up in Ulm, although I applied at a number of other schools in Germany, because I was extremely interested in their, in just about everything about it. Uh, there, there were new buildings that were published. Uh, there was the um, philosophy behind it. Um, I, I was just totally taken by this um, option of uh, all the others and when I applied they, they took me on and I was really, um, it was really to, to my surprise. Longtime professor Peter Meggert, who brought the influences of Swiss graphic design to the department, also felt the influence of visiting faculty from other schools. Based on a program uh, Professor Ranschlager had, somehow we managed to have the money that time by not hiring an additional professor to bring those people to teach for five weeks each. And that was one of the best experiences I had. The separation of the design program from the School of Art corresponded with the creation of the College of the Arts in 1968. But still, the work was not done. As a large division, Charles Walschlager, Louis Geisler, and Shirley Jones were given three years to demonstrate that design is an independent discipline with the need for its own four-year curriculum. The highlight of, of the 60s is that I was ready and, uh, to, to bring the proposal in, and Jerry Hausman um, said OK. And of course, that meant that he sat at the end of the, we had an executive room, very nice, big long table. Uh, I handed out the proposal and one to Jerry. I did present it and so forth and uh, questions were asked and they were good questions. And then finally I, I asked Jerry, uh, can we move on the question? Jerry said, I don't think you can do that. I said, what? He said, well, the university um, bylaws uh, indicate that we really don't have the power to do this for you. Being Charles, I said, 
Well, we'll wait here and you go in your office and you find that in your university bylaws and I'll sit and listen to it. But I had checked the bylaws. There was nothing there. We just sat there and we sat there and a few jokes here and there and then Jerry came in, sat down and said, you know, I really can't find anything in the bylaws. And I said, well, that's good. Let's call for the question. The history of the Department of Design is certainly part of the institutional history of The Ohio State University, but it is, more than anything, the history of a small group of passionate designers. Well, collecting the history of the Department of Design has been a fascinating experience. Fifty years is a long time, but it's still clear that design is a young profession. And um, the roots of this department demonstrate that very clearly. It's funny to think about other disciplines and departments within the university uh, being asked to demonstrate their legitimacy in order to become a department. But that's exactly what happened in this case. When we were in the School of Art and the College of the Arts was formed, the design became a division. And, uh, and through the process of articulating a definition of what the discipline of design is, the decision was made to make it a department. And uh, I find that um, remarkable because it, it seems like there shouldn't have been any question that design was a discipline. And yet it was new and it was distinct from the other kinds of things that students were able to study here. The faculty who laid the groundwork for the four-year curriculum for each design major played a primary role in the way they were defined. I was always a kind of a, a hands-on person. I, I wanted the students to experience uh, whatever they dealt with or working on, uh, and if possible, full scale, because there's nothing is better than full scale. Now, in those days, we had the space, we had our own model lab, our own machines, our own supervisors, and uh, I, um, I just utilized all of it to um, make it a, um, a, f a full-scale a full experience for the students. With industrial design as the department's backbone, faculty members in what was known as interior space design and visual communication design aimed to create the defining features of their programs. Heike Geller, another faculty member with strong German roots, received the challenge of formalizing the curriculum for interior space design as its first real leader. Geller succeeded in creating a program that could work successfully with industrial design while providing the specific features of an interior design education. There's this position I want you to apply. And I was going, oh, well, uh, I'm not really thinking about that now, but I didn't want him to come back a week later and say, have you done it or not? So I did it, maybe a month later, a phone call late at night. I found out later was Charles and Reinhardt, who wanted to hear my voice, <laughs> interview me. Actually, Reinhardt wanted to find out if I spoke the Swabian dialect, and Charles wanted to find out if I spoke English. And as I don't speak the dialect so much, it was okay. But at a certain point, uh, I was saying on the phone, I still remember that very clearly, so now what? And then they said, well, we want you to say yes. Once in Columbus, Heike Geller went to work to define its focus. Her educational background with Bauhaus trained instructors in architecture, interior architecture, and furniture design prepared her for the integrative approach that the Ohio State model had already established. In the very beginning, immediately told me, we have this idea of that major. And we tried it with different people, architects and designers, and it never worked out so far. We tried one more time with you, if you don't work out, we just forget about it. And so I was probably naive enough not to see a problem in what their idea was. 
but maybe more due to my education, which means a mix of architecture, interior and furniture design, that allowed me to see, yes, that is a possibility. Uh, we can make that work. But as I said, I had no idea that it would take so many years to actually establish a program like that. The visual communication design major benefited from the strong early guidance of Fred Zimmer and graduate student turned faculty member Shirley Jones Olson, along with the input of many well-known graphic designers who moved in and out of the program in its early years. Gunther Tetz, Tonsi Pelican, and Rudy Rug, among others. One of the visitors who came and stayed, Peter Megert, left his mark on the program through his undeniably Swiss approach to graphics and typography, as well as by his openness to learning new technologies and ways of working. A Kleinbrook student named Kimberly Elam. She was the first one who introduced the department to computers. And she is now the director of the Ringling School. That time when I started, we had a printing lab with all the different type, metal type, with little printing presses. So we learned typography actually, you know, the old fashioned way with hand setting, printing proofs and so on. And uh, later when a new chairman took over after Warschlager, he eliminated the type lab as we called it, to make it a computer lab. I had no experience with computers because with my background, you know, we thought the biggest invention was letter set. And uh, so I had to learn slowly. Charles Walschlager's successor to department chair was industrial designer Joe Kanchelik. The assignment of an Ohio eminent scholar position to the Department of Industrial Design became one of the most important changes to the department at that time. Kanchelik recruited Dr. Noel Mayo to the role. As the first African American in the country to graduate from an industrial design program, Mayo focused on recruiting many budding designers of color to the undergraduate and graduate programs. Through Mayo's decades of service, Ohio State can claim proudly to be one of only a few programs in the country to make the diversification of the design professions a priority. I was asked by uh, OSU, my secretary came in with a letter. She said, they've got everything in this description of who they're looking for except your glasses. So OSU made me an offer. I came out and presented. They started at 7 in the morning. They picked me up for breakfast met the dean and et cetera. And around uh, eight o'clock at night, the whole department was here. And I showed my work to the department. And the chair at the time, Joe Kanchelik, said, well, you're the person we're looking for. In 1990, the department hired Jim Kaufman to lead the group. Prior to the early 1990s, Students in all three of the majors received a Bachelor of Science degree in industrial design, but Kaufman focused on gaining approval for named degrees for students studying interiors and visual communication. He also created permanently assigned studio spaces for the department's more advanced students in the lower level of Hayes Hall. We wanted the, the, the name of the department to be the Department of Design, which is a, it is now. And it was a horrific process to do that, to get that name changed, because you had to have approval of the whole university, basically. And there were, were people in another school area that resisted this. And so I got it changed to at least the Department of Industrial, Interior, and Visual Communication Design and that's what it was for years. The introduction of computers to design education became the most influential cross-disciplinary change in the latter part of the 20th century, starting as early as the 1970s. The ability to use 2D and 3D programs to draw and model with light, color, texture, and animation opened the door for design students to share their ideas with others in exciting and accessible ways. What was for us, the interior group, 
and especially for me also an, an important feature was that you, from there on, you were dreaming about that. From there on, you were able to three-dimensionally visualize the spaces rather quickly. Moreover, not only to show them, but to change them quickly. So you could very quickly, for example, change the mood of spaces, show different materials, show different lights. Uh, you could then also involve the client from the very beginning into the process and get feedback. Prior to the rise of affordable personal computing, creating spaces for students to learn how to use computers and software became a critical mission for department leaders. When I came here, I inherited this uh, uh, Unix computer lab. Out of the 200 faculty and students, or maybe, well, there were more than that here at the time, you know, maybe 10 people knew how to operate that stuff. And it was just not, not the way we were going to go. And so we got rid of that stuff, and then we replaced it with one room with PCs, and then we acquired another room from the university, which was ne right next door. It's up on the second floor. So then we had a PC and then we had a Mac lab. And I think that existed for a long time. The arts at Ohio State, inspired by longtime faculty member Charles Surrey, have an international reputation as a leader in the use of advanced computing to generate images. The establishment of the Advanced Computing Center for the Arts and Design in the late 1980s expanded the ability of artists and designers to explore these kinds of practices. Wayne Carlson, a computer scientist with deep interest in animation technology, moved from the College of Engineering to the Department of Design and the directorship of ACAD at this time. I think that the integration of uh, ACAD into the design department was something that I, I felt very strongly about. I thought it was misplaced in the Department of Art Education. And so as I came in as the director of ACAD, and then as I moved into the chairmanship of the design department, um, I was able to kind of embrace ACAD with, uh, with one arm into the design department and to end up with the MFA degree in, in computer animation, I think is, it's a coup for the design department, but I think it's really important for the students who are studying and that to be properly placed. When interim department chair Susan Roth left the Department of Design, Carlson was chosen to take the reins as the chair in 2001 and Maria Palazzi assumed the lead of the research center, and she held that position successfully for the next 17 years. With Carlson at the department's helm, access to computers and technology became an even stronger focus for design students. He supported the creation of the MFA track in digital animation and interactive media, which continues to provide a unique program for digital designers with a range of professional goals. So we ended up taking two empty spaces over in uh, Hopkins Hall and converted those into public laboratories. And then we developed a partnership with Apple Computer and brought in um, the greatest Macintoshes at the time that you could imagine. I mean, that was really something special. But also, not forgetting about the product design world and even the interior space people who were using technologies that required PCs. And we outfitted those labs with uh, the best we could, with printing that we hadn't had opportunities to have before, with, uh, with scanning technologies and connecting to the ACAD stuff with the motion capture and all of the, the stuff that that had. And, and I think the ability to now do the kinds of things that we were able to do with those advanced technologies. Uh, I'm really quite proud of that and, and uh, I think the department took advantage of that right away. We had some new faculty that just wanted to jump all over that. Brian Stone, as you know, was, a, was already an Apple Distinguished Educator, so he was totally focused on that and now with these labs he was able to experiment with some new things. Wayne Carlson's diverse administrative experiences caught the attention of the provost's office, and in 2009, he moved into the role of vice provost and dean of undergraduate education. This left the department in need of a leader, 
and Professor Paul Nini stepped into the role. You know, Wayne Carlson had uh, taken that uh, position in the upper administration, and the dean sort of came to me and said, look, you're really the only full professor who can do this, so would you please do this? So, so I said, yes, I would, that's fine. And it really was supposed to just be for a year, and then they came back and said, well, we haven't really figured out what to do, so could you do it for another year? And the college was going through many sort of changes at that point, so it was understandable. And then they said, well, you should just fill out a whole four-year term. So I said, okay, I will do that, but I'm done after that. So, you know, we did change the name of the department, and I put that forward in my first year because I, I really thought I was only going to be doing it for a year. And I thought, well, if I could do nothing else this year, let's see if we can change the name of the department. Um, so at that point, we had the very long name of Industrial Interior and Visual Communication Design, which is a mouthful. And that had come about, I forget how many years earlier, but I believe Jim Kaufman was the one to, to get that through. And he had, at the time, asked just to be the Department of Design, and for whatever reason, we were not allowed to do that. So uh, it was, I think it was kind of lucky that some of the areas of the university that in the past had objected to us calling ourselves Department of Design sort of were past it at that point. I didn't really know that, but it was you know sort of fortuitous that it worked out that way. And I think part of it was that, you know, the design uh, professions have sort of grown up and are, you know, much more visible and that sort of thing at that point. And I think people realized it sort of made sense to do that. It might be tempting to only think about the department as a place where faculty and students work together to advance the programs and their reputations. But everyone knows that in big organizations, it's the staff people who really keep things running and no one is likely to ever exceed Karen Dimmick, who served as a clerical assistant in the office for almost 20 years before spending nearly 25 years as the department's academic student advisor. I looked through all the, the job notifications in a big notebook here at the university and I saw, hmm, Department of Design, contact Charles Walschlager. So I did and he interviewed me in 1971 and he hired me. <laughs> There were three of us that applied, and so I got the job. And after that, I just kind of worked my way up. And in those days, it was a clerk typist one, and then you moved up slow, the clerk typist two, and then secretary one, secretary two. And finally, in 1990, I became an academic counselor after I got my master's degree. And that was because dear Charles Walschlager and dear Joseph Koncelik encouraged me to get my master's. The first two decades of the 21st century have seen their share of shifts and growth as far as the faculty and administration is concerned. Faculty members Maria Palazzi, Jeff Hayes, Brian Stone, Peter Chan, Alan Price, Susan Melsop, and Elizabeth Sanders all joined and remain on the faculty for the celebration of its 50th anniversary. In 2013, the department hired a new department chair, Mary Ann Beecher, who is the first woman to serve in the role in a non-interim basis, and the first chair with a background in interior design. I think what was interesting about joining the department in 2013 is the feeling that it's transition time again. And because the design disciplines have changed or are changing, because there is a growth in the perception of design's value, kind of across the board, we're faced with the challenge of rethinking who we are and what we provide our students. And that is very exciting. It's a little intimidating but it reminds me somewhat of what happened in our past 50 years ago and I see it as a kind of invitation to revisit our definition of ourself and to think more about what design students today will need in order to be successful in practice in the future. The department anticipates its next 50 years with great energy and momentum. It stands on the broad shoulders of thousands of successful alumni who are a constant source of pride for us. I think the celebration of our anniversary is a wonderful opportunity to look back at the past, but I'm particularly pleased that as a group, we are more interested in using it as a time to mark a self-study of who we are today 
as well as to begin to envision what some of our opportunities are for transforming into uh, a dynamic new department of design that's ready for the future.